give me the names of the last four presidents. I would call on you, Ohayasa, but it must be by a white name. Have you chosen one from your book? No, Mrs. Shall I choose one for you? No, Mrs. Raise your hand only if you can name all four. If just one student can name all four, I will dismiss you early. Americans and the new United States is not an Indian friendly nation in the least. Native Americans were in an impossible situation. Side with the British, whose stronghold was Fort Detroit, and they risked the wrath of the rebel colonists based in Fort Pitt. Side with these Americans and their militiamen, and they would invite merciless retribution from the British. And as for trying to stay out of it, even if you were in Pennsylvania, a state founded by Quakers upon principles of Christian brotherly love, this too could have fatal consequences. Now one group that didn't pick one side or the other were the Moravian Christian Indians, who were gathered in three little communities, the most important of which was called Gnadenhuten. These Moravian Christians, there are maybe 100, 150, had tried to stay out of the war. They weren't hostile Indians. They had adopted many of the customs, the equipment, the technology of white people. They read the Bible. They sang hymns. They were, to all intents and purposes, the dream model of people back in the 17th century who wanted to convert and civilize Indians. And then a group of Pennsylvania militiamen arrived. When they had taken everything that they had that could be construed as a weapon, you know, tools, axes, whatever, that, that the Indians had, which could be used against, against them, the militiamen got together and decided to kill every one of them. So every single Indian, in fact the majority were women and children, I think there were around 30 men, so the rest, 60 or so, were women and children. All of them were massacred. They were brought in, in pairs to a hut where they were hit over the head with a cooper's mallet and their brains were dashed out without any regard to their obviously being non-combatants. And at the end of the massacre, the white militiamen who'd committed it melted away. There was never any legal action taken against them. And their argument was that these Indians had tools with writing on them, or they had books, or they had implements they could only have stolen from white people. And that's the tragedy or the irony of all of this. In a way, the things that showed that those Christian Indians were civilized were used against them because these militiamen couldn't believe they belonged to them. But I think that's a tremendously evocative story for Pennsylvania because what began as this noble experiment with white people and Indians living side by side had now turned into this most grisly kind of race war in which the distinctions between good and bad Indian are totally erased. It goes back to one of the problems, I guess, for Americans, white settlers. What does it mean to be an American? What is there about America as a place which defines the people that live there? When the Boston Tea Party took place in December of 1773, there's protest against the tea taxes which are being imposed by London, and you get these patriots running onto these ships of the British East India Company and pouring the tea into the harbor. They dressed as Indians. Now that, to me, is tremendously interesting because they dressed as Indians to prove they were American. 